I decided to buy a PlayStation Portal. Am I mental? So hear me out. The problem is I like new tech and I like new things. Who the hell doesn't? But the PlayStation Portal doesn't really fix anything that was missing in my life. I've got a PlayStation downstairs and a PlayStation uh, I access for videos. If you have access to a phone or a laptop, ultimately you don't need this at all. But I wanted to give it a shot. Maybe I'm wrong. And so throughout this video, I'm going to give Sony 24 hours to convince me that I should keep this device. Because shout out to the EU return laws. <laughs> Okay, so we should unbox this thing first. I've actually not seen one in person. I bought this with my own money, knowing full well I actually might hate the damn thing. But... <laughs> oh, USB-C cable, and... That's it. So I've unboxed the thing. Let's turn it on. Hope it's got some charge. It does. Okay, I was a little bit worried for a second there. <laughs> ah, stop. It feels like a PlayStation already, but it runs Android. Maybe one of the other reasons I got this device. You might have noticed, I'm a little fan of Android. Couple of updates and the thing has picked up two of my PlayStation 5s. So I can decide to, it says logged in yesterday. I guess I'm not logged in. Let's do that. And then maybe search again. Logged in now. There we go. <laughs> now, obviously, one of the initial impressions of the device is actually the lightness of it. So I use the DualSense Edge, which is already a little bit heavier, but I can very comfortably just kind of wave it around with one hand, which is much lighter than I thought it would be. It's also worth noting, I didn't really like the Steam Deck. Now, I made a video dedicated to that, and you can watch that after this, I'll link it. But basically, I ended up going for a GPD win after the Steam Deck kind of disappointed me a little bit. And all full clarity, I still use that thing, and I've mostly been playing Jack 2, which is a PlayStation game anyway. I've got a pretty high bar when it comes to portables. They really need to impress me very quickly. Connecting to PS5. Now it's right here. Now my network is quite interesting because I have a mesh network and essentially that means there's multiple points and they all connect together. Not wired. Only one of those points is wired. Taking a while. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to press. <sighs> that would be why, wouldn't it? Oh, right. Honestly, straight away. This is having network issues. <laughs> so let's have a look. The resolution is clearly uh, struggling. It's worth noting again, I primarily gonna be playing racing games. They need a little bit less input lag than something like a slow moving third person. Like, like I will say I have a lot of network equipment here, but it's mostly wired. It's not looking, it's not looking great. You can see the pixelation, not the greatest of first impressions considering I have a really, really good network. Let's give it a better chance. Uh, <laughs> I'm now in a place where I know I had no issues with a MacBook uh, streaming it with a controller connected to the device itself. So let's connect it to PS5. Let's actually see it. Oh, okay. That is so much quicker to connect than I thought it was. Right, we've got the network error again, but resolution already looks better. As I say, games are gonna be quite telling racing games. I did try it actually on the MacBook setup and actually it's kind of unplayable. Did not, did not enjoy that at all. <laughs> but see, then I played a little bit of like GTA on that. That was fine. Definitely a much better experience. Definitely. I think the best way to show you it is, well, playing some gameplay. So this game generally runs at a pretty steady, smooth 60 frames. And this is kind of what I get. It's definitely not unplayable. It's pretty smooth. 90% of the time. However, it does get its little stutters. But I would actually say this kind of impresses me. Like I could actually play this where I couldn't previously. But I don't think I'm gonna be setting any summit records on this. Speaking of, let's freaking go. No one played the summit and I got platinum. <laughs> Boy, that is close. I actually think that might be one of my primary uses if I end up keeping the device. There's a lot of the time where I need to check the summit, for example, or I just need to go on to Gran Turismo to check what races we've got. Uh, in Need for Speed, maybe I need to quickly check what level I am inside the pass. This, I think, is a really nice way and actually being able to, to use at the same time. Because like, if I am being real, completely real with you, I don't think I would ever use my phone 
to connect to my PlayStation. I actually have a fold, which number one makes it kind of awkward to, to really put into one of those devices. Uh, if I got one of the clamp ones, it's just a little bit of a faff to set up. I like that this is just pick up, turn on, connect. I'm actually gonna allow myself to maybe eat my own words and I'm actually gonna take part in that event right there. But before I do, uh, let me just show you the side control. So you basically swipe to the side and it gives you these controls. So you can connect a headset, you've got the brightness control, you've got airplane mode, which surely just is completely pointless. Uh, and then you go to settings, you got your device information, updates, language, time and date. This is nothing fancy that I was kind of expecting maybe a little bit more. You can control the vibration, which is kind of cool. Uh, you've got your display and brightness again here, which is uh, you can actually change the right. It's just on or off. <laughs> and that's it. That's your settings. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's jump into this. Now, I, I genuinely want to see if I'm going to eat my own words. Uh, this is a slalom event. It is nighttime. Oh God, it's also off road. Okay, uh, no. <laughs> uh, this one is also off road. Let me just do a quick test. This actually might start off road and then go on road. It does. That's kind of infuriating. <laughs> It's not this device's fault, that's that's this damn summit. Wait, what the hell? No, it's an off-road one. What is going on? It's on-road and off-road. This is absolutely awful. Who designed this? Who designed this slalom? This is disgraceful. What what's card did I get? 70,000, okay, that's about half <laughs> of what you kind of want to get. Let me be clear, that was mostly my driving and the car. <laughs> Another one of the games I definitely uh, would use on a device like this, i say is Gran Turismo. Now, Gran Turismo is interesting because I primarily play this on a racing wheel. So my driving is going to be absolutely disgusting. Uh, however, it could be quite useful because as I said, Gran Turismo added this new daily feature and setting up a rig and jumping on, it's kind of frustrating every single time. So. We've got these daily challenges that give you good money. Let's do a quick full race, shall we? On Circuit de la Sarf. So something I saw someone else do, actually, is look at the time code on the screen here. And actually, what are my controls? There we go. So I'm gonna try rolling the stick because that's definitely the best way I've recently been playing racing games on a controller. Rolling the stick, essentially pushing it forward. Ooh. This screen genuinely looks so good. Move by the way. It's a lot more noticeable when it's much brighter. When it's like a dark interior, you can't notice it kind of stuttering. But Gran Turismo generally is quite a smooth game. The frame rate is pretty solid. Definitely having a little problem. It That's my driving, I promise. But when it's like darker zones, I actually almost can't tell as much. I don't know. It's kind of a confusing device so far. Like it, it, it feels pretty well done. I don't know if I have a use for it. It's winter. <laughs> I don't, I really highly doubt this is gonna work. So basically I live in an area that probably won't have like 5G. So 4G is pretty much the norm everywhere. So let's, uh, let's go and find out. Right, so what do we think then? Do we think that this is gonna work? Should probably, uh, set up my phone's hotspot. Okay, who broke the internet? <laughs> this is something that I was actually able to, to replicate previously before with remote play on PSP, I think. So I, I don't understand why this wouldn't work. I just connected to my Pixel and definitely trying to connect, but it might be struggling. This is showing absolutely no signs of it even attempting to connect to my PlayStation. I mean, it says, it says connecting, but like it just, it's not doing any of the cool animations as before. So I think I've been had. I think I look like an idiot now. <laughs> it's probably looking for it to be on the same network, which, well, that wouldn't make sense. Okay, uh, that's, that's just worked. Bit of an update, I'm not actually using my phone's data now. I'm actually using my commercial properties uh, Wi-Fi signal, so it's a Wi-Fi signal away from home. Realistic geographically, it's not very far, but that doesn't matter. It's still gonna go over the internet and across, and I've actually connected. That's insanely impressive. What the hell? Now, there's definitely more latency, but that is sick, so there's definitely more of a delay, but and, and to be fair, this is using a 30 meg internet compared to my gigabit at home. Of course, my PlayStation is still at home wired. Bit of a jump there. I wouldn't really use it for any like competitive driving, but. Wah! 
That's actually really sick. I wonder if I can get my phone to work. Very, very impressed. You can see I'm actually doing pretty well. So now I'm actually closer to the connection point. This is, this is definitely more stable and still very playable. And again, Gran Turismo is definitely one of the more like, uh, less, need less latency games that I actually play. I'm sure if you were playing like fighting games or something, then uh, <laughs> you might run into a couple more issues. But once again, try my absolute best to get this to work over mobile data, because that would be awesome. I've got it sat here, but uh, once again, it's just not good enough. So according to the internet, uh, other people have got this working. I keep getting a uh, something wrong error. So I'm not saying it doesn't work, but on Wi-Fi I had a flawless victory. My 4G is pretty strong. This is just not happy. It's not connecting, it's not happening, which is a shame because while this is a further issue, if I'm having this issue now, uh, I'm in, a t in town right now. When it comes to Wi-Fi in hotels, usually off airports, you have to sign in using a browser. Right now, this doesn't have a browser. I'm pretty sure they could fix it. It runs Android. It's got a keyboard already. It's kind of a no brainer. But yeah, for me right now, it's just straight up refusing anywhere I go. I would have thought it might have worked here, but uh, I guess not. This thing feels a little bit incomplete considering that Sony's already said they do plan on allowing you to stream to it completely eventually. I do think that with it being Android, people are gonna have a little bit of a tinker. I don't think it would take very long before we're running Android apps or running Android as is and basically doing whatever the hell we want with it. Meaning we can play Xbox, we can play Steam games over the network. It basically then becomes the ultimate portable device. And I don't really know why they didn't do that. It's also worth noting in the test I did try with 4G. Uh, my 4G was 100% faster, uh, not actually 100%, probably more, uh, than my Wi-Fi at the commercial spot. The, the commercial spot internet connection there is 30 meg. As long as they had the ability to stream to it on the go, and they have the ability to, well, give you access to a web browser. Those two things, I think this device I could recommend. Uh, but until they do, I'm a little bit on the fence. I'm a little on the fence. Okay, so a bit of an update since the previous clip. Now, I was trying to use 4G, and I did the next day go to a restaurant into the city and access 5G. And surprise, surprise, it actually worked with 5G. So that was super impressive. However, it wasn't really that playable. It was definitely worse than playing on Wi-Fi, even on really bad Wi-Fi. Uh, so I wouldn't really recommend it. It's probably gonna drop in, drop out from what I've seen people explain on like Reddit and such. But of course, if this did work in 4G, 5G, you could put a SIM card in it or whatever, this actually might be really useful in that I'm primarily a console gamer, so all my save games are on my console or on the PlayStation side of things. But ultimately, you definitely can't beat a machine that can do both, like the Steam Deck or the GPU Win or whatever. And I know the Steam Deck is definitely more expensive than something like this. However, it's about 150 more, which in the reality things is not a lot to ask because if it can do everything this can do and actually play games locally, and if you actually stream to it, the battery life is probably gonna be better than this as well. On the deck, you could use Steam Link, PS Now, or even Game Pass. Big up to the crew Motorfest having cross save, so I can play on PC anyway. So that, yeah, that's kind of irrelevant. Ultimately, they continue to show that the PS Vita was way ahead of its time and better than this thing. Give us another one. And thus, my conclusion on keeping this thing, no, not for now. I do think I will possibly get another one in the future, but right now it doesn't have a purpose when I've got superior devices. However, if they add PS Now or someone roots it, this ergonomics are the best I've felt on like a handheld controller, so I'd probably get another one. 